City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light it pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Buddy, welcome back. So thank you for being patient with me while we're getting back on our new schedule of uploading on the first and third Fridays of the month. This just gonna help me out a whole lot. So because I have a little more time in between videos, I am going to try a dress that I think is just looks fun. I need fun. It's getting to be warmer springtime, so let's go for it. And Vogue patterns were on sale. So this is what I grabbed. It's like a handkerchief dress meets an elf top. Okay, um, it might be a little bit easier to see what that shape is on the back. It's, it's kind of like a funky Stevie Nicks 1970s concert vibe to me, but if it was a little longer. But on me, this is going to be longer because on this model with the tall legs, you know, it's here. On me, it's actually going to be closer to there, which is fine. So. To get the length that I want, I am leaving the skirt pattern pieces as they are instead of shortening them like I usually do to fit my shorter legs. So this is great. Um, I'm going to be using a combination of a few different fabrics. So on the pattern, if you can see, they have the fabric that they're using, which is a stripe going in several different directions, which is what got me thinking, well, why don't I just use several different fabrics that kind of go together? So let me tip the camera down and I'll show you what I'm thinking about. So I am going to, I've got some cotton lace here. I'm moving that out of the way. That's my backup. I'm going for reds and all the fabrics that I'm using are 100% cotton. I actually have one more. It's in the wash right now. Um, because I do want to pre-wash and pre-dry all of this. But it is just calico type weights. But I think, you know, why not? I like that kind of thing when it's warm out. So I have the most of this one, which is a red with some little black leafy line art on it. That's going to be my main piece for the bigger pieces. And the biggest pieces are um, a couple of the skirts, okay? Then, to go along with this, I'm using up some more of my mums, I think they are, or dahlias, or whatever. I have another piece of this, another piece of this, and then I have another big red bold flower print in the wash. And I think between all of those, I'm gonna have enough fabric. But I also have, this, it's, um, is it cotton? It's cotton and nylon and rayon. All right, well, it's a lot of lace and it's a heavier lace. And at one point this was on like 70% off. So I bought the whole bolt, you know, cause you never know. And I was thinking, well, that might be kind of fun mixing in there. I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to be doing with this. I might just use it as an accent piece or I might skip it all together, but I just want to let you know it's on the table. It is not off the table, if that's the origin of all of that. So the pattern I bought is the size ZZ, which is the large, extra large, extra, extra large. And their large is 1618. And so that is what I am going to be cutting out. Um, they do not intend this to be made out of stretch knits, which is good because mine is not stretch. It does use an invisible zipper 
and a hook and eye. So I've got those. We are fine. Let me go ahead and get them cut out. Now these big rectangular pieces here are going to be part of the skirt, but then these triangles are another part of the skirt. So instead of just a basic four point handkerchief skirt, we're going to have extra triangles in there. So it should end up being, I think, an eight point handkerchief skirt, which is fun. It looks multi-layered, but it's not. They're all just kind of pieced together. But that gives me an idea. I'm going to hold that thought for later. And then the other thing that's kind of cool is these sleeves. Um, okay, so this is in no way a practical working around the farm dress. Just letting you know right now. But these sleeves where it's, you know, straighter up here and then a big old elf type sleeve down here. It just looks fun. It looks like something to go and go shopping in the funky shops in. So I like that. Let me go ahead and get my pattern pieces cut out and I'll let you know what I find. Okay, so I've just opened it up and I wanted to show you this is the sleeve part. There's only one view in the pattern. It's just one dress, one view. So you use all the pieces. But for my size, it has an 18 inch finished width of sleeve, which is plenty. So I am so thankful I'm not going to have to alter this sleeve piece at all. They're actually giving us a decent amount of ease. So very happy about that for those of you who are like me with massive, you know, middle-aged sausage arms. This is going to work. Okay, now something else that's kind of fun on this pattern is there are two front bodice pieces. I think that they're exactly the same shape, but the pattern is calling for one to be cut this way, one on straight of grain, one on crossways of grain. So I think the only difference is the grain line marking on them. But if you look at the pattern piece that is number one, it has the little bullseye and it has the uh, finished bust measurement, which is 45, which again is good. The only thing is that it does have a bust dart that I'm going to have to lower an inch. I, I will show you that in just a little bit, but that is not a big deal. The other thing is it has what looks like a big ribbon on here is actually a, they have a belt piece for that. And from what I can tell, see this little thing that looks like a necklace, a pearl necklace? That means that there's going to be two pieces that have to be joined together, two pattern pieces before you cut out your fabric. So I am assuming that there's going to be like, if this is 10, it'll be like 10A or something like that somewhere else. Ah, here it is, 10A, okay? So when you cut these two out, you're going to have to tape the pattern pieces together before you cut that piece out. I'm not even sure if I'm going to do that. I might use a fancy little belt, you know? So. I'll hold off on doing my big uh, sash piece for right now and just put it aside until after I get my dress done. So here's the thing. Uh, the back piece also has two pattern pieces. One to uh, go have a grain line this way, one a grain line this way. Here's what I'm going to do because the whole point in having the grain line opposite directions is just so that the design will look different. Okay. Um, because this is a woven and the type it is, it's, it doesn't matter anything else. Um, what I am going to be doing, this is what I'm looking for, is using a different fabric for the other side. So it's going to look different because this fabric will be different from that fabric. So, I'm putting one back piece and one front piece back in the envelope untouched and I'm just going to, instead of cutting one of this, I'm going to cut one of one fabric, one of another. And for my front bodice piece, don't know where it went. Look at this sleeve. It's a huge lower sleeve. It's so fun. But anyway, for my front bodice piece, I'm going to make all my adjustments on just one of them. and 
you know, cut two different pieces from there. And that way, this is a fun and young kind of a thing. If one of my daughters wants one of these made up for her, I'll have the other bodice piece in here that is not altered by gravity um, so that, you know, she can use it. Okay, one last thing. I'm about to cut out my skirt piece and um, I'm doing the size large and this has two other sizes larger than my large on the pattern. Um, and I want my skirt as long as the extra, extra large length, okay? But up here at the center, I want the size that's gonna fit with my bodice and everything. So what I'm gonna do is up here in the center, I'm gonna cut my size um, from the waist area, this little half circle. But when I get down here to the outside corners, I'm going to be cutting it out at the extra, extra large side. And that's going to give me about two inches longer um, than it already is, which is great with me. That should end up giving me about a 46 inch finish length from the back of my neck to the uh, bottom edge. And I'm not too sure where they're counting the bottom edge. I hope they're counting it at the little points. That's what I'm assuming because, you know, different areas. Um, but I think that that's what I'm going to end up with, which will work perfect for me. All right, so my skirt piece is a big rectangle and I have two big rectangles to cut and I have a long piece of fabric here. And the depth of my rectangles, let me get a thing here. This measurement here is 24 and 3 quarter inches. So just to keep everything perfectly straight, because cutting two big rectangles is kind of annoying, takes up a lot of room. I tore off my selvage edge here so I have a nice raw edge, because sometimes the selvage edge wants to, you know, bunch up a bit. And then I'm just going to measure down 24 and 3 quarter inches. Give myself about an eighth of an inch extra because sometimes when you tear it, you know, it wants to fray out just a hair. And then just tear this down. And um, then all I have to do is cut, because I'm basically making one really long strip that hopefully I can get these two out of like that. And uh, then I can just cut those crosswise. So just thought I would mention that in case anyone else is annoyed by cutting very long strips of fabric. All right, so once I had my long strips cut out and I had exactly an inch extra, this is how much extra I had at the end after I got my two long pieces out. So cutting it kind of close, but we're fine. So I have my two long pieces here folded in half. I folded this piece in half, which is, you know, this one folded in half. And that's going to make it a lot easier just to come back in here and cut my waistline out. Okay, um, there are some marks that will need to be transferred over, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. But over here I wanted to point out where there's a dot. There's two dots um, on this long part here. That is where that extra triangle piece is going to get sewn on. So now that I know that I had enough for the skirt pieces, which was my main thing um, to figure out how much fabric I'm going to have left over after I'm done with my skirt pieces, because now that's going to help me strategize how I'm going to use my other fabrics to uh, do all of the two part sleeves and the bodice and the back and my little extra points. So I need to take a break and wait for the laundry to get done downstairs so I can have my uh, pieces all up here at once so I can strategize. So uh, when I have all of that, I will uh, turn the camera back on and see you up here. Okay, welcome to the next day. So I've got my fabrics out of the wash and dried and everything, but before I can cut that out, I need to alter my front bodice piece here. And what I'm doing here is I'm lining up my front, my center front. Well, actually this is center front, but the seam, the cut line in there. I'm lining that up with one of the grid lines on my table 
because that is also the grain line, you know, and it's gonna make sure that everything stays nice and square. So what I need to do is, you know, because of gravity and everything, my bust apex, the fullest part is no longer up here. It is actually closer to down here. You know, stuff happens, we move on. But that means that I need to move this whole dart down to match that. Otherwise, I'm gonna end up with a dart pointing up where there's no business, so. What I need to do is isolate what doesn't work. So this works up here, this works over here, it's this part here that doesn't work. So I am going to draw a horizontal line above that point, you know, just picking an arbitrary place, about a half inch above my dart here. And I'm gonna draw it over far enough. Um, I wanna leave this intact, but I'm just gonna take it right about here. Okay, that's gonna leave it far enough that um, I'm way past the furthest point of my dart, okay? <clears throat> now, I'm gonna draw a line. Oh, and I ended it where I can see that there's a, a grid point on my underneath there. And so now I'm gonna draw a line straight down from where that was, okay? And what I need to do is cut this line here and I'm also going to cut it down to right about here. I just need to get it at least an inch or a, a couple inches below this dart. Okay, so let me get my scissors cut here and here, and I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. And this is cut. You know, I just stopped right around here. I have a piece of scrap tissue paper. That's going to be handy. So what I'm going to do is fold this in half down here. And if I put my ruler so that it is horizontal, you know, I'm just gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right here so that my ruler is at this line going across here. I can just fold my little pattern down and then I want to lower this dart by an inch and a quarter. Okay, so half of an inch and a quarter is five eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna place my ruler so that the top of that fold is at 5 eighths of an inch. And flip this back up like this. Oopsie, I think it slipped down there underneath there. Hang on a second. I should. Okay, so now that's at 5 eighths of an inch there. Fold this back up, crease it, and I am going to need to tape this in place right here. I don't know why I open that drawer. That doesn't have tape in it. All right, so here is this. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape this closed up here too. All right, so now that dart is lower, but I have a gaping wound right here. So I'm gonna put my little scrap of tissue paper underneath there, like this. I wanna make sure that the outside edge of this piece is at an inch and a quarter, okay? Because that's what it should be over here on this side. And that looks like an inch and a quarter like that. So while my ruler is holding that in place, come back here with a piece of tape and tape it closed, okay. So now, just putting him back together and over here on the side. Okay, well, I think I needed a slightly longer piece of tape there, but we can make it work. So now, what I need to do is, this is my dart, but these angles here are a little bit off. Okay, so I'm actually gonna need a little extra piece of paper here that I'm going to tape down below. Lots of tape, I know. It's just my life here. Okay, so what I need now is from this point, I am just gonna blend it in until it's meeting down below here. Okay, so this will be my new cut line on this side, like that. And then up on the top, the same type of thing, where I'm just gonna blend from this point to this point and that's a lot straighter, like that. 
Okay, and then just cut that. So that's going to be my new pattern piece. Um, I am not expanding this or anything because based on their bust measurement, I should still have a, a few inches of ease and I think that that's fine for this dress because it does have a zipper up the back. So yeah, let me go ahead and start strategizing. I am trying to figure out how I'm going to use all of my different fabrics here. And I want it to be somewhat dramatic at the base. So I, this one is a lot more purple, okay? This that I cut the skirt out of is a lot more red. But they do kind of work together. I guess this would be more magenta and this is more red. But I kind of like it. And I'm thinking that I want to make these points at the triangle and these big flare sleevey things out of this. I have enough of that. All right. And I'm toying with what to do with the bodice and the sleeves. I know that much. So let me get started just getting that part cut out and then I'll see what I have left. So I'm just over here cutting out my sleeve pieces and stuff. And I was thinking, cause, you know, I was cutting with my scissors. And there's, here's the thing with shears. I don't know. I didn't learn it until later in life. You know, the proper way to hold these is like this with this finger out here and this little divot. And it makes such a huge difference. And it's so much more comfortable and you can guide it around and direct it and everything so much better. But I think that we don't do that because think of it. At least this is what I was doing. I was thinking this whole process. When the first time you use a pair of scissors like this, you're probably a child and your hand is very small. So going like that's not going to work because your hand's so small that you're just trying to cram everything in here, you know. And then as you get older, slowly a finger comes out and stuff like that. But no, that's actually how it's supposed to go. So, you know, fun fact of the day. It's an old habit to try to break those. So about half the time you'll see me doing it the opposite way, even though I know that this is the case. It's just, you know, a habit. I have decided <clears throat> to use my lace for my sleeve. And I know it sounds unorthodox, but here's the thing. Um, it's a very busy pattern for that lower sleeve. It is this stuff here in the lower sleeve. And it does have white. It has some white daisies in it, okay? And then we've got that red red up at the very top, which is this, okay? I had a lot of different, you know, reddish prints, floral prints and everything that I was playing with, putting between them. But I think that's going to be fun. And this does have a little bit of stretch to it. Not a lot, but a little bit. This is it. It's, it's a beautiful lace, you know. Um, so I think that, well, actually, it doesn't have stretch now that I'm tugging on it. But that's okay. It's sized, it's sized well. I think it's going to be cute. I think it's going to be cute. And if anything, having these sleeves lace opens the door to me to add extra lace trim somewhere on it. In, that I haven't actually thought out yet, but it does give me that opening. So I'm happy about that because you know what? This project is about fun. It's uh, going to be spring soon, I hope. And this is a fun week. It's my birthday week. I am 56 this week. I've been on YouTube for two years now. I started it when I was 54. So, you know, give it a shot if you feel like it. Never too old for anything. Okay, let me um, go ahead. There's one more piece that I need to cut out, and it is this little binding piece. And they want you to cut it on the grain line. Basically, you're making a bias tape. It is an inch and a half wide. So I need to find a scrap. Hopefully I can do it on what I have left of this red because it is going to be the neck binding and that way it will match. And I think I can. I think I can put that strip going this way. Alrighty, it's going to fit on here. There is a tiny little grain line arrow down here that's going off in a diagonal. So it's not perfect. This is my grain line here and that's straight of grain, but it's close enough it's going to give me what I need, which is a little bit of flexibility and stretch just a bit because um, it's going to be binding the neckline, which is a curve. So you need some of that. And if you're new to sewing, 
basically if you have a woven fabric okay and there's threads going this way and threads going this way when it's cut on the diagonal it's called the bias and when you pull it on the bias you get a little bit of stretch okay even if it's woven very firmly so this way it's not going to stretch this way it's not going to stretch this way it is and that's why they have these pieces cut to go that way all right welcome back it's actually been a couple days and i wanted to get back to this i did glance at the instructions and this does have an invisible zipper in the center back and what they're going to want you to do is close up the front and put the skirt on and then put the zipper in the back and for me it is a lot easier to put in an invisible zipper in the back while this part is flat okay instead of trying to work it in while the dress is sewn into a cylinder already so i'm going to change the order that i actually sew things i'm going to leave my center front seam open um, and so I can put my zipper in the back, then I'll close up my center front seam. You'll see when we get there. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention is the dress itself. Mine is going to, it doesn't, I'm using the same fabric on both sides of the, uh, the bodice. Okay, that red fabric, this one here. And... I'm going to have this part is going to be lace and I am toying with the idea of putting lace on my front bodice and so I'm going to take a minute go into my lace stash and see what I can find out because I am just feeling kind of an 80s calico and lace kind of vibe here okay so what I did is I cut some pieces from the same lace I'm doing my sleeves out of because it has this really cool scalloped edge there and for placement i need to make sure because i want to put it in the very center of my bodice but i need to make sure that it is not going to interfere anywhere near this uh, bust dart over here not sure why that one didn't punch through there you go so what i'm going to do is just on the right side of this and this is a heat erasable pen so these marks will disappear I'm just going to mark my dart and draw it in. If I can get my pen to work here. Okay, so I can very lightly see what I did. Let me come back with my ruler here and just draw that dart in. This will show up a little bit better momentarily once the ink dries. Okay, so there's one. I'm going to go ahead and mark it on both sides. Okay, I'm just trimming this little extra selvage off so that uh, I just have the scallop there and not the extra part to deal with. So I am thinking I'm going to put it like the little V shape, you know, that was so common in the day. We can call this a retro inspired or whatever we, I need to do to justify what I do, you know, if I need to do that even. Just give me a minute to play with it. <clears throat> Basically, I want to match up the point in the scallop, the position on the fabric where the uh, lace meets up on both sides. Get that all set so that when I sew it up the center, everything's going to match or as close as I can get it to match. Right now, this is looking pretty good to me. I have this one pinned in place. I still need to pin this one um, and I'll trim the final edges after I get it permanently attached. Okay, so I am just put my one side face down on top of the other side just to double check how it's going to look. So I'm going to peel back my top one to about where that 5 8 inch seam allowance would be and I can see that the lace is matching up at that point okay so that's good with me um, up here at the shoulder it's not as critical that it's perfect but it still is very close okay so I'm going to be stitching the lace onto my calico fabric here and this is all before I've surged around it before I put in my darts anything like that so uh, let me go over to my machine and I'll show you how I'm going to take care of this. Okay, I'm out here in my uh, outsider of my sewing room room. It's kind of like a little foyer area upstairs here. 
And I wanted to show you, I'm using my treadle, my, uh, it's an 1894 vintage uh, Singer 15, the original 15 on the treadle cabinet. And I'm gonna be using her with a quilted foot. It's a quilting foot, a darning foot, however you wanna call it. It's the foot that goes up and down, okay? And that's how I'm going to be sewing my uh, lace onto my fabric. Okay, I'm going to try to get this close so you can see, but it's honestly right in my way. So um, I'm just going to get her started out here in the seam allowance. I'm going to move back and forth. So since it's a, a darning foot, and on this machine my feed dogs don't drop easily, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to be able to move my panel around however I want because every time the uh, needle bar goes up. If you see right here, it's going to push against this little arm, which is going to lift up the foot from the bed. So I have some room to move it around. Okay. So let me go ahead and get started. Oops, I need to move this pen. I can't put my hands right here because of the camera. So just bear with me for a second. So you can see I'm just kind of moving it around, around near the edge of the lace, but not having a typical presser foot is helpful because it's kind of an abstract motion. Um, if, we'll tell you what, let me go ahead and finish this and then I'll show you what it looks like on the back. Okay, I need to tell you, I got just about done and the little bitty spring in my tension mechanism broke off and went flying across the room. And it's just this tiny little wire that's wound into a spring. And you know, it, it was over 130 years old at this point, so that's fine. I have another one in my shop I can grab, but um, we'll just cut her some slack here. I was almost done, so I can just finish up at my other machine. Um, but let me see if I can flip this to the inside here. If you can see these little stitches, that's what it does. It just makes little stitches, but by doing it with the darning foot, uh, you can move it in any direction you want. And, you know, especially if you're working with a beaded lace or something, having a foot that's up higher, so it's not going to be crunching into anything, it, it makes it a lot easier. I just have like Oh, what is this? Probably about six inches, a six inch strip here that I need to do on the side. So I can do that on my regular machine. So I'm gonna pull my thread off here and move back into my sewing room. Okay, so now that I got my lace on, I think it's gonna be fun, you know? Why not? It's my project. I can do what I want. I just noticed this is a designer um, pattern. It's a Zandra Rhodes. I'll have to look up who that is. I'm woefully ignorant of that. So what I need to do uh, before I serge around the edges is I need to get my dart made. So let me get my pattern piece back over here and I'm going to be marking it all on the right side now and while I mark this I'm going to go ahead and mark this little dot up here also which is a sleeve placement dot. And so I'm gonna get one of my heat erasable pens that is black because that will show up much better on this side. And just like I did on the front, color through my little dots and then connect them here. Um, where I have a notch, I'm just gonna clip that, you know, with my scissors into the fabric, color in this right here, and uh, do that on both sides. Okay, so I have my darts drawn on here on my wrong side and I'm going to get a pin and stick it down the first dot, back up the second dot and slide that through and then up here at the very tip I'm going to pinch it at that tip of my dart and I'm going to smooth it so I have a nice crease line there and tuck a pin up here sure this one's nice and straight anchor it there and I'm actually going to stick one in the middle too okay I'm going to do this for both my right and left side and then when I stitch it I'm going to start out here at the edge and then come all the way into the center okay that is done and I am pressing the dart down so I'm going to get my ham here which stands upright love my ham um, 
and press that dart down, pressing it on the ham because the ham is curved, kind of like, you know, the bust right here is curved. It just makes it lay a lot better. So on this one, let me go ahead and put it on this way, all right? And I'm gonna push the seam allowance down and get it pressed and move it up over and do it again. Once I get this done, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, surge around the outside edge. When I get to this point, I'm just gonna surge this down. So I just have one going down here and you can see my point sticks out a little bit. Well, that's because, you know, I had to alter some things over here so the angle wasn't exactly right. But when I surge it, um, I'll just be taking that little edge that's sticking out there off. So that's going to be fine. Okay, so next I'm going to get my back piece together. And there's really not a whole lot that has to happen here. I'm going to go ahead and clip my notches. There's a dot right here I need to mark. And I'm going to mark that on the wrong side. Um, but that is it. So once I get that dot marked, I'm going to go ahead and take me these two pieces, surge around the outside edge, um, and then just set these aside. Okay, so here are my two back pieces, you know, nicely surged. I just use one needle when I'm surging, the one that's closest to the blade, not two. Um, so I'm going to set these aside and get my two big rectangle shaped skirt pieces out. Okay, I've got two of these cut and before I do much of anything, since this is a circular cut uh, waistline here, I want to make sure it's not going to get stretched out of sorts. I'm looking at their instructions. Okay, they're going to tell you to stay stitch it after you've sewn the pieces together. I am not actually sewing my pieces together at this point. You know, you will see later why. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run a stay stitch around it now at about a half inch seam allowance, you know, slightly smaller than the stitching line. And after I get that run on both of my pieces separately, then I'm going to come back and serge all the way around it on both of the skirt pieces, the front and the back. Well, it's actually a right and a left side. It's not front and back, it's right and left, but it's a circle square kind of skirt. You'll see. Okay, I cannot remember where I left off last time, but I wanted to show you where I am. I've got my two skirt pieces surged and my row of stay stitching in. So what I'm gonna do now, which is different than the instructions, is go get my front and back bodice pieces. Okay, so I have two front and two back bodice pieces. And I'm just gonna show you on one because you know what I do for one will be the same as the other. Um, keeping them separate, so a right side and a left side, I'm going to sew them at the very top here, the top shoulder at 5 8 7 inch, and the side seams here at 5 8 7 inch, and then press both of these seam allowances open, so that then I'll have two complete sides of my bodice. Okay, so at this point, I've got two bodice pieces that look like this, okay? and I have two skirt pieces. So what I'm gonna do is sew one skirt piece to each bodice set, okay? So I have a little crease here where I ironed it in half to mark that center point. That's gonna line up with the side seam here. I'm gonna go ahead and get that pinned in place right here and then match up my outside edge here on this side and over here on this side. And hopefully when I open this up, it'll match up correctly. And it looks like it's going to, so that's pretty good. All right, let me go ahead and get both of these pinned together, uh, making sure that the outside cut edges and serge to this point are all matching up. Once I do that, I'm going to sew straight across here at 5 8 of an inch, making sure my seam allowances stay open. So I'm going to put an extra pin over here to hold those open like that. Okay, and then that way I will have two halves of my dress put together.
Okay, so right now, this is what it's kind of looking like. You know, these are not attached here at the front or the back. You know, it's going to be a fun little length. But before I actually put my zipper in, because the reason I'm keeping them separate is because I wanted to be able to keep this thing open completely flat when I put my invisible zipper up the back here. We're also going to be setting in some sleeves. And right now I am toying with the idea of going ahead and putting the sleeves in while they were two separate pieces. Um, you know, just because that might be easier than waiting until it's one huge piece to manhandle on the machine while I am uh, putting the sleeves in. So with that, let's go ahead and get our sleeves put together. Okay, so for my sleeves, I got two pieces. I've got my upper sleeve, which I cut out of my lace, and my massive lower sleeve. There's two of these pieces for each sleeve. Um, there's a dot here I really need to pay attention to, but I am going to go ahead and take my pattern piece off and serge around each one of these four fabric pieces before I actually get started. Um, we are going to be doing a small hem around the, this edge here, but sometimes when I have a small serge on it, it actually makes it easier for me to put in a little narrow hem. So. I will be going all the way around it. Give me five minutes and I will be right back. Alrighty, so I've got them all surged. Now up here there's a little square. I need to punch that out. Punch out a circle in the middle of the square. Very philosophical there. And on the wrong side of my fabric, I'm going to transfer that mark over. Um, I'm just going to color inside of it with black, but still that's going to be hard to see. So I'm just going to draw a line straight out to the side. If you can see, that's my mark there um, because that's going to be the starting and stopping place when I'm actually sewing this together. <clears throat> so it's kind of odd to, to think about how this is going to work, but actually from this point to this point, it's going to be left open. Okay. Remember there's two of them this point there it's sewed closed and um, and then down here it's sewed closed this way so this is going to be actually the sleeve opening at the top that gets sewn onto the bottom of the sleeve like that it's kind of different but you know we can make this work so let me go ahead and get this marked on the other three pieces Okay, so with that done, I need to deal with my sleeve piece here. Now, since it is just out of lace and it's not going to unravel, so I'm not going to serge it. Um, there's these three dots here that I need to pay attention to. We're not actually going to be gathering a sleeve cap. It should fit as is pretty well when I try to set it in. So. Um, you know what, because it's, it's a little bit tricky to mark on lace, I'm just going to use a piece of tape. This is uh, paper tape, you know, it's like for crafting and stuff. It's about a quarter inch. I had to cut all my nails off the other day, so it's making it tricky. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, pay attention to the back. The back has two notches on it, okay? Front has one, back has two. I'm going to need to make sure I mark my back side carefully. But also right here where this dot is, I'm sticking a piece of tape on the lace at the very top center. I'm going to stick a piece of tape here and one right here. And I think what I'm going to do also is with a different color tape, I'll just put a piece in that back corner. I'm over here trying to get my tape unpeeled. Okay, so I've got my last one up here that's for matching up. And then with my little lilac colored tape, I'm just going to put a piece of this back here in this corner. And that's just going to remind me that this is the back. Okay, so now I have these marked. Well, let me move this pin. I have these marked. I'm going to flip it upside down, flip my pattern, and mark the same thing on the other side. And I am marking this on the wrong side of my lace. There is a right and wrong side of this lace. 
Okay, so with that done now, what I need to do is get my sleeve pieces here and fold them in half right sides together and sew this here at 5 8 of an inch on both pieces and then press that seam allowance open. Okay, so welcome back. It's actually been a few days. I've been busy. I want to show you what I've got here, okay? Because the more I thought about this dress, the less I liked the round neckline. There's absolutely nothing wrong with a round neckline, but I think that it's the combination of all of the angled points down here, and I'm gonna be putting more on, the angle of my lace, and I love my lace. I am just feeling like I want more of a V-neck type of a neckline here, you know? I just feel like that's gonna be better for me. So that's what I'm gonna do. But the process that I'm gonna use to finish this neckline, it's gonna be the same that the instructions have for the round one, which is like using that bias tape piece that we cut. But I just wanted to show it to you on her, you know, because I think that it's gonna, it's just gonna work better for me. And you know what, it's my project, so I can do what I want. So anyhow, with that being said, let's go back to the table and finish these sleeves. All right, so I've got my two sleeves, the upper part, the purple tape means that's my backside. I've got my little tapes up here marking my three dots. I'm gonna set these aside for just a minute because we are gonna be working on these very long, very funky shaped pieces that are gonna go underneath. So for each sleeve, there are two, so let me just go ahead. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let me grab another. Okay, so I'm gonna place them here, right sides together. And remember I transferred over the mark right here. What I need to do is sew from this mark down here at five eighths of an inch. And I believe it's from the top, yes. Over here on this side, from the top down to this point, at five eighths of an inch. I need to do that on both sleeves. Now I'm looking at the instructions and they actually, they wanted me to do a double stitch here. So it looks almost like a felled seam on the outside. Um, I did not do that because it was lace. I will do that, well, no, not like a felled seam. I stand corrected, because look, it's just a double stitch. Not too sure why. Um, but two rows of stitching on there and it's not being felled together. Let me look at this and think about it for a minute. Okay, they don't really explain it. I can tell you in their glossary, they have a definition for double stitching, but it doesn't actually say double stitching in these places. Um, and it's just sounds like regular where they want you to press they don't want you to press your seam allowances open. I can tell you that. Instead of that, they want you to press them all the way together like this one would be towards the back. I think that's just a design option. I don't think that that's structural or anything because um, I just don't see it. I just don't see that that's really structural, especially like, like this. There is absolutely no way you need two rows of stitching for a structural. But if you're gonna press it over to one side, yeah, it's gonna hold smoother that way. So that's the concept. So here's the thing. For the ones that I already did that I pressed it open, I'm gonna leave it. I don't think that that matters one bit. And I think if you're gonna be pressing your seam allowances open, that's fine. That's just, you know, if you're gonna be pressing them to one side, which I will from this point on, because now I'm aware, um, to do two rows of stitching. So that's basically you do one at five eighths of an inch, one about a quarter inch in, so I have two rows that way. I know, very wordy. Let me go ahead and get these two sleeves done. So what I am doing when I'm pinning this part here where I have to stop halfway, I put this pin where I need to stop in upside down. You know, the rest of them have the heads out. This one's upside down and that should be my trigger, you know, because sometimes I get distracted when I'm sewing that I need to do something different here. I need to stop there. Just thought I would point that out. Okay, so over here on my ironing board, I have them sewed. 
and they want you to press the seam allowances towards the back, I believe, yes. And since these are identical, I'm just gonna arbitrarily choose that on this one, I'm gonna press it this way. The next one, when I put up, you know, the same way with the bottom here and the top here, I'll press it the other way. Um, just kind of choosing which is which. And then when I'm done, so say, I'm waiting for my iron to warm up, if you can't tell. Just turned it on. Um, once I press it this way, so that I know for sure this is my back, I'm going to go ahead and get a clip. Let me just grab one over here and pop a clip onto the back side. Okay, that way I know that's my back for when I'm going to go ahead and get it put onto my little lace part of my sleeve. So up here, this is the side part that gets towards the back and up here, it's kind of weird because it's an opening just at that point. This whole spot here also is going to get pressed towards the back like that and just ignore all of this up here. Okay, it'll take care of itself pretty soon. And I want to show you when I'm doing this, I just have this whole thing up on my sleeve roll. Um, I highly recommend that you have a sleeve roll, especially a long one. Mine is probably close to 18 inches or 16 inches probably long. Um, a lot of the times the ones in the store are very short. Having a very long one makes life so much easier. If you don't have one and you can't purchase one, I make my own. And I have a very old video on making sleeve rolls, pressing hams, and my pressing ham has a flat bottom so I can just stand it up. But I highly recommend you uh, have those tools because they will make your life so much easier. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is hem up the bottom edge of these sleeves, this big round area. What they want you to do is put in a row of stitching at a half inch all the way around. You know what, I'm gonna fudge it and make mine 5 8 because that's the mark I have on my machine. I don't have a 5 8 inch mark or a half inch mark. One extra eighth of an inch shorter will not make a difference. But I wanted to show you because we're gonna be making a tiny little uh, rolled type hem like that. I wanna take out some of this bulk down here so I'm going to come up probably about three quarters of an inch up and take out most of that seam allowance. You know what, if I turn my light on, you could probably see a little bit better. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to take out most of this seam allowance, that thread there, both down here and up here, okay? So once I have that trimmed out on both sides, um, then I'm going to come back and put in a row of stitching with a fairly long stitch um, at 5 8 of an inch all the way around. Okay, so I want to show you there is my row of stitching that I just put in that the instructions want you to do. Now what I'm also going to do that the instructions do not say is to help me when I'm hemming these curves here. Um, from the point where the curve starts, so right about here, this is pretty flat at that point, but from right about here, I'm going to put a pin there and on the other side so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go over to my machine and do that uh, finger easing thing around this edge and I'm going to be putting my row of stitching just inside this stitching line from my serger. So let me take you over to Rosie so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so over here at Rosie, she is a straight stitch machine. I'm gonna try to do this slowly on her. I'm gonna start, here is the curve here. Okay, there's the pin I just put in. I'm gonna start it right at that pin, okay? And like I said, I'm gonna run my sewing line um, pretty close to just inside my serging, okay? Now the thing is I want to build a little bit of ease in here. So I'm putting my finger behind my presser foot, you know, just smacking right up behind it. So I'm going to be building up a bunch of fabric back there. And when it gets too much, I'll just let it go, okay? And I'm going to do that all the way around. You know, that's getting to be a bunch. And this is actually really, really going to help me when I, it's time to hem because it's going to 
work in all of the extra at the edge. So let me finish this on both of my sleeves and I'll meet you back at the table. Okay, so back here, the way that I'm gonna do this is, um, I need to trim off my excess threads here. Don't need those. Where the first line of stitching is, right here, that's gonna be where we fold it up, okay? So that's gonna give you a good guideline of that's gonna be the edge of your hem, okay? But then I'm gonna come back and just inside of my serging, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it in. So I'm gonna end up with a hem because I did 5 eighths and not a half inch. It's gonna be closer to a 3 eighths of an inch hem than a quarter inch hem. I don't think that matters. But what I wanted to show you is up here where I did that finger easing thing. I don't know if you can see. It kind of pulls that edge in. So if I lay this down Pull my camera out a bit. Okay, so if I'm just laying this down, I haven't done anything, I haven't pressed it or anything, but you can see that that edge is gonna wanna pull itself in and that's gonna make my life so much easier. So at this point, you know, I'm just gonna push it down to where that stitching line is at the edge and turn it under. And I'm gonna leave my stitching line slightly to the inside because I don't wanna see that on the outside and I'm starting in the center. So here's my seam line of the big curvy part. I'm starting here and I'm just gonna work my way out. And if I feel like I have too much ease worked in, and you know, it's kind of like a gathering stitch, I can just push that out. So I'm coming down to this point, folding it where that stitching line is, tucking it under so that my little gathering is up at the top space and stick a pin. And I'm gonna do that you know, all the way around. Once I have it pinned like this, I'll give it a quick press with the pins in place. That'll be fine. And then I can come back and edge stitch it. And on the machine, I'm going to edge stitch it right along the inside edge right here. Okay? Okay, so back at my table here, I've got my hem put in, you know, it's fine. I have pressed it and think it looks good. What I'm gonna need to do is this is the lower sleeve and we need to sew our upper sleeve to it. So I'm gonna put my upper sleeve right side out, okay? This is right side out, this is inside out. The bottom edge down here, that's the side that we're sewing onto this, all right? So if this is inside out, and I can see my seam allowances are pressing that way, this is the back, this is the front, okay? If I hold my, remember with this being the side that we're sewing on, so that's the side up that I'm dealing with right now, is, remember this is the back, that's the front on here, I want this to be the back and that to be the front on here. And it is not, my little purple indicates that this is the back side. So that's the wrong one. Let me get this piece. All right, again, this is right side out. This is back, this is front and, whoops, wrong side. This is back and this is front. So we're good, we got the right one now. So I'm gonna match up this center seam here with this seam right here. I'm going to do that first. And remember, I press these seam allowances open on my lace, which is fine in my opinion. Okay, so I'm just going to put a clip there. That way, everything is going to stay where it needs to. Tuck this inside here. And this is going to be sewn on this way. Um, I think that we're gonna have to do it in two different steps. I haven't actually looked at their instructions, but it looks like it fits perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pin it together, you know, the raw edges together here and here, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna sew it. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm moving my stuff out of the way there. This is what it looks like on the inside. 
this is a complete circle, but on the outside I have this little flap that is free. Okay. Um, it matches up pretty well in there. I think that it's fine. I reinforced before I got started and reinforced when I ended. So I am good there. It does not say to do a double stitch here. So we're not going to. I'm just going to open this up and this whole seam allowance is going to stay up press towards the top and uh, my little sticker wants to come off there okay so I want to make sure this stays towards the top so when I press it I'm just going to leave this out here at a 90 degree angle pull this up press it that way okay so here is my half dress this is the front this is the back Okay, and I need to find a sleeve that when I put on top of it, right side out, this will be the front and that's the back. And this is not it, that's the wrong one. Okay, it's got to be this one. If it's not this one, then we have bigger problems than I thought. So if I lay this one on, right side out, I want one with the back here, and that is it. I got my purple tape. So I'm going to go ahead, stick this underneath and match up this little underarm seam first and get that pinned. The uh, three tapes on the top are indicating where the three circles were on the pattern. Okay, so the center one here needs to match up where the shoulder seam is. So I'm just going to line that up here and actually once I have it in place I can take my my tape off because it's easier to remove it before I stitch over it just saying you can do it it just is a little more difficult okay so now I have a dot here and I have a dot here that is where the other two from my sleeves are going to match up so that is pretty much it there taking that tape off and putting a pin and the same over here matching that up with the dot taking off the tape and putting in a pin now i just need to figure out if there's any easing that has to happen and actually it fits pretty well um, i don't think we're going to have to ease anything the very outer edge of the sleeve is going to be a little bit bigger than the bodice but at that five eighths of an inch point in it's fitting really well okay so let me go ahead and pin this and this we are going to be doing two rows of stitching on so once i get it pinned the first row of stitching um, and i'm i like to start it right about where my notch is i've got notch right here okay which is at the point where you're sleeve is starting to curve on the bottom. I start there, go all the way around at 5 8 7 inch, and then at that point bumping out like a fat eighth of an inch away and doing another row. So I end up with two rows of stitching when I'm done. So let me go ahead and get those sewn in and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just realized I put these on backwards. I'm going to leave it to me, it's a design option at this point. But when you're sewing it, do exactly what I did, but instead of having it come off the front, go off the back. I knew it was supposed to go off the back. Look, it's draping off the back for her. It should be draping off the back for you. Mine's gonna drape off the front, but I have it over on my dress form. I think it's gonna be fine. It's just a, you know, elvish kind of look. So let me flip the camera over. Okay. Can you see this? So this is it. This is my sleeve. So maybe it'll make more sense if I put it on like so, whoosh, you know, it's a big sleeve. It's a big sleeve. And if it was the other way around, it would make more sense. Actually, this is going to get in my way. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to redo it. Give me a minute. I am going to have to pull out a whole bunch of stitches because I did double stitch this, you know, as you do. And um, I'll fix it. Actually, the thing is that the top part that is sewn onto the dress 
is correct. It's just this bottom part down here that is not. And actually, that bottom part we did not double stitch, so it won't take as long as I thought. So, let me take these off and I'll show you really quickly when I repin it how it's supposed to look once it's um, actually the right way. You're not going to believe this. I don't believe it. I actually had one of these sleeves correct and I just picked the correct one out. I think it's time to stop and go downstairs and have a cup of coffee. You know, it's not a big deal because I can sew it back in and it only took a few minutes to, but I had one of them sewed this way and I had the other one sewed that way. Okay. So, let me put this back up. And sometimes I have people ask me, why do I serge around my pieces beforehand? Why don't I just, um, you know, sew it and then serge my seams together after that? You know, and a lot of people do, and I used to, but if you ever make a mistake or you need to adjust something and you have, you know, sewed it and then serged close to that, afterwards serging your two seam allowances together, you're kind of messed up because, um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of wiggle room there. And picking out serging is a hundred times worse than just picking out a regular stitch. With a regular stitch, I can just grab my little blade, pull and pop, 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 oops, pop all the little um, threads out along the way and it goes really fast. But serging is not that case. So, give me a minute to fix, put this back in, fix this one, and then have a cup of coffee. And then we'll be back up here. Okay, so when we're repinning this on, what you want to make sure is here is your center seam for what is my lace one. The seam allowance, the seam line for this long part gets matched up with that, okay? Um, they're not showing it here, but over on the other side, um, over here, Oh, this is it. This is it. So this is the opposite side here that you cannot see. This seam line here is the shorter one, which goes here. Okay. So when I go ahead and I'm going to repin this on, I want to make sure that I have it all lined up that way. And I say repin it on because I decided to skip the coffee and pin it before I got the coffee, which was a wrong thing, but at least it was just pinning and not sewing. Okay, so here is my seam on my upper sleeve, okay? This gets matched up with this long one right here, okay? So I'm gonna open this up and place this seam right there. And that's gonna make sure that the big hanging down flappy part is under your arm and not on top of your hand where it would get in the way of, you know, having tea and crumpets or whatever. So let me go ahead and pin the rest of it. Once I have this point anchored in, you know, then I'm set and I can just go ahead and match the rest of it up and stitch it back together the way I was supposed to in the first place. Okay, so I am back from my break and now that my sleeves are all situated correctly, they're looking pretty cool, I must say. Um, before I actually put my invisible zipper in, I want to fix my neckline. Because remember I said that I wanted to change it from a round neckline to a V-shaped. So what I'm gonna do is just take one of them and I can tell over here, this, well, you cannot see that. This point right here is the point of my dart, okay? So I know that my, my fullest point of my bust is right around here and I want it, the edge of my uh, neckline to be a couple inches above that, you know? And so if I lay my ruler right here, just continuing this angle from the shoulder down a little bit, Draw a line. That looks pretty good. Uh, before I cut it, I'm going to put some pins along this edge just to hold the lace on there because I'm going to need to come back and get that 
trimmed off. I'm looking for my good scissors and I don't see them. They're probably buried somewhere. So what I'm going to do is come back and cut along this line. Okay. Now, I need to do this exact same thing to the other side. So let me bring this piece over. And if I lay it down right here, put this on top of it, like so. I can see where this cutting line is going to be. And actually, I am just going to pin it on and cut along the edge of it. I think that's going to be fine. But again, before I do that, I'm going to put a few pins down here just to hold the lace and the red fabric together. And there. Okay, so let me trim here. Okay, so now that this is cut off, I'm just going to toss it. Um, I'm going to go over to my serger and just serge along this edge to uh, keep the two layers acting in unison. And then I will be right back. Okay, so now that that is done, I think I'm going to like that a lot better. I need to get started getting ready to put in my invisible zipper. <clears throat> Excuse me. The pattern calls for a 22 inch invisible zipper. The only one I had that matched was either 20 or 24. I'd rather go longer than shorter. So that's what I'm using the 24. So before I even get started putting it on my dress, what I'm going to do is open it up and go over to my ironing board. And I want to kind of roll open these coils. I don't even know if you can see. See if my light is charged up there. Okay. So what I'm going to do is open up and roll open these coils and iron it with my zipper unzipped. Okay. Don't zip it up again after. Just leave it open um, with your coils on both sides flattened out as much as you can with your iron. Okay. So now they are pressed pretty open. All right. And I am going to be using my tape. This is double sided water soluble basting tape. Okay. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to start with one of my dress pieces because they're still in half here. So let's just look at this one here. This is my very top. Let me see if the instructions give us any guidance on how high up they want the zipper. They said they place the zipper stop a quarter inch from the upper edge of the fabric. Okay. So if this is my upper edge of the fabric and I mark down a quarter inch, you know, just to be precise, I'm going to go ahead and draw that line. Can't really see it, I know. Oopsie. But trust me, I've drawn a little line right there. Okay. The zipper, the side that the little toggle hangs from is the front. Okay. I want to just for right now, turn it over so it is front side down on my dress. Okay. So I'm looking at the back side of the zipper here. And I'm also, the stop is this little plasticky part here. They want this stop to be where this line is. I have more than a quarter inch up here. So that's just going to be sticking out the top. And that is fine with me. So basically, this point right here. Okay. If you can see, this is the crease where the coils turn. That's where I'm going to be stitching. The distance from that crease to the outside edge of my tape is three eighths of an inch. I am using a five eighths inch seam allowance. So that means in order to get the uh, coils, at the exact place where I need so my zipper can be invisible, I'm going to need to set this edge in a quarter inch from the edge. All right. So if I can, I've surged all of my edges here and my surging 
is about an eighth of an inch, if you can see. All right, and so I can use my serging as a guideline. I'm just going to move it in slightly more than that. So I'm going to be placing it so it's about this far in, if you can see. All right, so basically I have a quarter inch over here, and then there's the raw edge of my tape. Now, the way that I'm going to get it to stick is my tape here. So before I get started on the right side, so on the side that has the little toggle on it, I'm going to place a strip of this tape and it has a paper backing. Okay, I'm going to place it all the way from down here where the bottom of the zipper is, yeah, putting it along the edge all the way up to where the little top stopper is up here. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay, so now that I have my tape on here, I'm turning it over. So the right side of my zipper is down. I'm looking at the wrong side. And I'm going to be placing my tape this way. Okay, so you see how the zipper is upside down here. This is the tape that goes on this side. All right. With that understanding, I need to peel the paper backing off of this tape, which I am not going to lie, can be a pain to get started. So give me a minute. Um, I cut off all of my fingernails because I was having issues with gloves. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to pull down about that much to start with. And I'm going to start off with this little stomper on that line that I drew with the tape in about a quarter inch, okay? Which is giving me about an eighth of an inch between the edge of my tape and the beginning of that serging, like this, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and continue placing the tape, or taking the backing off of the tape, and then placing the zipper tape onto my dress in the same way all the way down. I'm not really worried about that bottom dot because the zipper I'm using is a couple inches lower anyway. And uh, I'm going to use the full opening of the zipper. I could always just open it the 22 inches, but you know, why waste the extra inches if you've got them? You know what I mean? So give me a minute making sure this seam allowance here at the waist is still pressed up. We're going to need to Keep in mind that here. <clears throat> okay, so you can see I'm working my way down to the bottom and right there is about good. Now I'm going to put an invisible zipper foot onto my machine. So let me go and get that foot so I can show it to you. Okay, so I have a couple little guys. This one is for low shank feet and it's just a little small foot. It works, but it's not my favorite design. This beast here, that's my favorite design. And this is for a high shank machine, so I use it on Rosie and my Meister. It's got a little spring on it. It's got these two slots and a place for the needle right in the middle, okay? So when I sew this, if I want to get my stitches in that crease, I need to pay attention to which little slot my uh, zipper coils are being aligned in, okay? So actually it's probably going to be this way. Because I have it stuck on, it's like basting and so I'm allowed to, to do it from the bottom up. If you're just using pins, it's a lot trickier because things can shift with pins. But if I start here and I can just move straight up, I can be 100% confident that my foot is going to keep the coils out of the way of the needle, but I can still get in there really, really easily. So anyway, that's the foot I'm going to use. I'm going to go pop it on Rosie, do this row of stitching, and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got it sewn on. Okay, it's right in there as it should be. Seam allowance is up. Uh, before I actually grab my other side, I don't want to zip this up yet because I don't want my coils to fold in. But what I'm doing is I'm just kind of laying it 
so as if it was closed and I'm making sure that the top is lining up and everything is good here. So let me put these two top marks together. Pull this and what I'm trying to do is figure out exactly where it's going to meet at the waistline. And I think I am going to have to zip it. Ah, I don't like that. But just to make completely safe. Because this point, where's my pen? Here's a pen. Okay. This point here, which is the point where my bodice is sewn onto my skirt, I need to make sure that I match that up on the other side. Or else it's not going to line up. Um, Thankfully, my zipper foot is pretty forgiving. It'll be fine. I can, I can smoosh it as I go. <clears throat> but what I need to do is get my other dress piece here and I need to lay it open like this. Actually, I'm going to flip it over this way. Okay, so I have my bodice up here, the skirt part is down here. This is my uh, waistline seam, in case you can't see. It's right there, I know it blends. All right, so what I'm gonna do is put to this side that I already sewed the zipper on, upside down on top of it, but over about an inch or so, okay? And that's just gonna, make it convenient for me to, to do some work here. So just like the other side, I need to know where a quarter inch from the top is here because that's where I'm gonna put my stopper. I'm gonna pay attention to this point right here. Get my pen capped off, okay. And here is the other side of my zipper tape, okay, it is upside down. This is the back side here. Okay. I need to pull the paper backing off of this tape. This is actually going a whole lot easier than it usually does. I just got a friendly roll or something this time, I think. Okay. So I'm going to pull this down at least to the point where I've gone past this. Okay. My little line there. I'm going to start with that. And I'm placing it again in about so that my edge of my tape is about a quarter inch from the edge and placing that there. Then I'm going to skip all the way up here and match up my little stopper with the line I just drew. Again in about a quarter inch. Okay. I need to make sure these two places stay where they need to and I'm just kind of pulling my fabric out a little bit tight so that I can ease everything else in in between. Okay, so now that is set nice and sticky. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so now I'm going to pull the rest of this down here. Off the rest of the way, throw this away. And just work it down. This part down below, because I have not sewn my dress closed at the bottom, it's a little bit more forgiving. If a little bit of, you know, tweaking or misalignment happens down here, I can just even it off down at the bottom of the hem. I like doing it this way because if you sew this up first and then do it, it is so easy to get a big bunchiness right here. It's, it's just not worth it to me. It's really not worth it to me. So anyway, now that I have this set, I can go back over to my sewing machine and sew this side of the zipper on. And I think I'll show that to you. All right, so on the first side, I started sewing at the top. This time I'm starting at the bottom just because that's how it's gonna work out. So I'm placing this so that um, you cannot sew all the way to the bottom on invisible zippers. You just can't because you run into the little tab area and everything. So start where it is convenient. Um, for me, I need to make sure that the bottom of my foot is above all of this stuff back here, okay? And I'm going to set it so that I have, let's see if I can get you down here. I don't even know if you can see that I have a little groove right here and I'm aligning my coils into that groove, okay? 
and I'm just going to start do a couple stitches and then on this machine I just have to manually set it back because it does not have reverse and then go over it. All right so making sure as I go if my coils have wanted to straighten out again just using this hand to kind of flatten them and I'm keeping an eye on this little center point here of my invisible zipper foot and I'm making sure that's traveling down the crease that I want it to go. Okay and the other thing I'm looking at is when I see this line, I'm making sure, and I know you can't see, but there's a, a seam line right here. I want to make sure that that does not get shifted, and it shouldn't. Oops, sorry, I've got my hands all over the place here. All right, let's see here. And I want to make sure I take my time that it's correct, but also I don't want to rip my tape off. Um, I want it to stick where I want it to stick so that it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, I'm going all the way up here. And again, up at the very top, I'm going to back it up. Okay. Okay, so back here at my table, I'm trying to get things kind of flattened out here. The first time you zip it up after you put it on is the trickiest because you know everything is a bit out of sorts. But then it works itself together. So you can see down here, it's not attached at the very bottom. That's okay, I can deal with that in a bit. Let me get this thread clipped out of here and pull it up. Yeah. Like I said, the first time's the trickiest. Okay. So now let's double check. Am I even at the very top? Yes, I am. Life is good there, okay? At the waistline, I don't know if you can see, it's like right here and it is exactly level. That's perfect, I love that. Um, I might run over to my ironing board before I do this part and just iron this really quickly so it'll lay nicely and then I'll come back and we'll work on the bottom part. All right so ironing those coils now because the first time I did it to open them you know it because they're plastic that heat's going to kind of coax them back into oh yeah laying curled up that's the way to go. So now it looks just like a seam you know hence the term invisible zipper. Can you see right here where my waistline is matching up that way that's my center back looks fabulous and to me it's a lot easier to do this when I can flatten and butterfly this whole thing out than when it's in a cylinder which is this is the whole reason <clears throat> why I changed the order that I put things together. Anyhow what I need to do now and you can see I stitch this one lower than this one that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this extra tape off here just so it doesn't get in my way. Yeah, that little bit down there. Come on. Okay. Sometimes that extra tape is a bit troublesome. It wants to get in your way and gum up your life. Okay, so now down here, I'm looking at the bottom part of my zipper. All right, I am I'm tempted to open up this one side so that I have it at an equal length. I really should have stopped them at the same point, but you know, for some reason I didn't and that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. My zipper was a little longer than what they called for anyway. So at this point, they're both stitched to the same amount. And I'm gonna pull this extra tape off here too so we don't have that in our way. Okay, so pulling this out, I'm going to fold these seam allowances together like this, okay, and get those pinned together. So it's going to look kind of like this over here. Um, I'm just going to put a clip over here for right now. So I'm just kind of lifting that out. I'm going to 
go ahead and match it up the rest of the way down and look it comes pretty far down that zipper does that's okay um, put one more now this seam allowance that I'm going to use down here is 5 eighths of an inch which should match up to where this is so I'm going to be sewing starting out as close as I can to where I stop sewing here which should be at 5 eighths of an inch and then just continue all the way down if you cannot get your needle right there get as close as you can even if you're like a quarter inch away that's fine you can always come back with a matching needle and thread and just make one or two little hand stitches there and it'll blend it'll be okay so let me go ahead and switch my presser foot out back to another regular flat presser foot and get that sewed on okay so i'm back and i actually purposely left a decent amount of a gap just so you could see that I can just fix this. So this is probably closer to half an inch there. Uh, move my needle and thread out of the way and show you when I open this up. Okay, this is my, this is where my zipper is. My zipper ends uh, right about here and here is that gap, okay? When I press it, it's gonna blend, there is no pucker of one side bigger than the other or anything like that it looks great so what I'm going to do is come back over here fold this out and with my thimble and oh my gosh just trying to shake this thing out here all right I'm just going to do some little back stitches okay so if I start up here coming on and I can kind of see the line all right so that first stitch was just to get it started and take a little back stitch I think my needle is rusty why did I grab a rusty needle excuse me because I want I want tetanus that's what I want okay that looks better all right so now I can just come back in here, follow the line. And until I get to the stitching on the bottom. It looks like I'm actually off center of here. That's okay. I'm just going to blend into it. Okay. All right. So there's my little stitches, you know didn't quite line up I don't know what I was looking at but I'm just gonna come over here do an extra back stitch and then do one off to the side to lock it in okay now let me go ahead open this up and um, press it on the ironing board pressing this seam allowance open down here and I'll be right back okay so this is the bottom of the zipper and this is the seam below it it all blends really well very happy with that so now i'm going to sew my center front together okay so if i'm going to put this together i need to lay this one right side up this side on top of it wrong side up i'm going to match up my center seams right here and get that pinned in place um, what I need to do is I want to make sure that my lace is still matched up and it looks like it is so that is good I'm going to be putting a little reference dot up here looks like I didn't cut it exactly right for some reason hang on a second let me see here if I if I need to fix something remember when I trimmed it I thought I trimmed it accurately but maybe I didn't let's see it looks like one side is about an eighth of an inch shorter we can figure that out later that's okay I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it as is up here you know what I'm gonna go ahead and match it up at the top and just ease it in we can do that too so pinning this about halfway 
So this side out here is bigger than this side in here, only by like an eighth of an inch, but it is what it is. So I'm folding it in half so that the outside um, edge is the bigger one, making sure that my edge, my cut edges are level. I'm gonna place that pin there, and that's gonna average that eighth of an inch out. Um, where I need to make a dot, which I keep got distracted from here, is let me get my ruler. And from this top seam, because we're gonna be using that uh, tape to finish the edge here, I'm gonna give myself a 3 8 inch seam allowance up here at the top, okay? So I'm just gonna draw a little line with my ruler at 3 8 of an inch right there, okay? Now, this center seam is gonna be 5 8 of an inch. So I'm gonna draw this at 5 8 of an inch this way. So, looking at it where those two lines intersect at this point, I'm not gonna stitch above that, okay? So when I come here to sew my front together, and I still need to pin the skirt part, okay? So I'm gonna sew this entire front together, you know, from the very bottom, making sure the seam allowances stay up here, and I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna leave above that point open. Okay, so let me get this bottom part pinned, stitch it at 5 8 of an inch, and I will be right back. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm over here at my ironing board. I've got stuff all over the place. I'm just going to use my sleeve roll again so I don't have to get everything perfect underneath this seam because there's pieces everywhere, it feels like. Slide my seam roll, sleeve roll, whatever you want to call it, right underneath here and press it open. Hello, Minna. Minna's being a pain right now. Um, Minna used to belong to my daughter until she moved away, the one that's getting married. Well, the guy she's getting married to, God bless him, is very allergic to cats, so Midna's here. But I'm also working on my daughter's wedding dress. It's over in the corner, and it's zipped up in a highly protective, extremely large... Um, protective case. And then it keeps going over and trying to open it. It's like, no, you cannot. You cannot. Okay, so here is that center front seam pressed open. I am going to go ahead and put this onto my dress form because I am really curious what she's looking like. Okay, so I'm just going to walk you over here. So there's my new neckline. And it's kind of fun. Now we still have to add more fabric to the bottom, don't forget, but here's these sleeves, you know, very fun. This is like, the, what is it called? The Lusty Something Month of May, that Camelot song. Anyway, I'm having fun with this, I really am. I need to get the other pieces out of this fabric, those triangles, because we need to put those onto the bottom before we can hem up the bottom. But I also need to cut a little bit extra of the bias strip that goes around the neckline because my neckline is now a little bit longer than it was before. All right, so uh, this is my original little bias strip, and then I cut an extra bit. I don't know exactly how much I'm gonna need, but I'll have plenty. So I need to join these together. So what I'm gonna do is put them here, right sides together at like a 90 degree angle, okay? And scoot you in here so I can barely see this outside corner and that outside corner. I'm just gonna draw a line right there, okay? Now put a pin in because I do like pins. So when I sew this and then I should be able to open this up and it'll continue in a flat way but having that sewn on the diagonal like that, okay, um, that's gonna make it so that even at that point it'll have some give to it. So let me go ahead and sew that little strip right there and then I'm going to trim off some of this seam allowance down to about a quarter inch and press it open.
Okay, so I need to go ahead and bind this tape onto my dress. And I'm gonna do it in two different sections. And just to show you, that's what my little join looks like, you know, all good. So my first section, I'm gonna start here in the center, okay? And I'm kind of folding it, everything from the other side down so I have access all the way from this edge over, okay? I'm gonna put my tape right side down and I'm just putting it so that it comes beyond this edge over here, okay? If you can see what I'm talking about here. I'm just gonna pin the beginning of it so that it'll hold its place while I go over to my machine. Um, what I'm gonna do and this will be the trickiest part because I need to make sure I keep all of this side folded down and out of the way. But at about a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I'm gonna put a row of stitching from here all around the edge. All right, I've got my first side sewn on here and I'm doing my second one. And I wanted to point out when you're pinning it on, there's gonna come a point where there's like this big curve towards the back. And what works for me is, um, you know, I'm coming up straight here to this shoulder, okay? But instead of trying to yank and shape my tape that way, it's easier for me just to turn the whole back edge down here, okay? And uh, it might feel like there's a little bit of a pucker right underneath right there where you overlap it. But as soon as it opens up, it will disappear and uh, you know, it's gonna work itself out just fine. But it's just easier for me just to flatten out this fabric to match up to where the tape is when I'm getting it pulled together here. So what I'm gonna do at the very end is here's my zipper. Okay, let me trim off this extra serging thread there. All right, so say this is folded under the way it should be when it's all closed up, okay? My tape is gonna come all the way to the edge of that, and I'm just gonna sew it straight off the edge. I have extra over here. I don't need that much. I'm gonna need some, but I don't need that much, but I'm not gonna cut it off at this point, okay? So I'm gonna sew at 5 8 7 inch, actually no, at 3 8 7 inch from this side here, all the way to this front. And just like this side, make sure that you, if you're doing the V front like I am, that I have all of this stuff folded down out of the way so I can just come straight across and none of this stuff from the other side is gonna get under the needle. Okay, so I've got my tapes on. Now, the way that the instructions want you to do it is to bind it so it's like this, so that you have a little stripe showing. Um, that's one way. Another way is to have it flipped all the way to the inside. We're going to do it that way. You know, it's just a design option. I've seen it done both ways, but on this pattern, this is what they want. So that's cool. Let me <clears throat> flip it to the inside here first so that we can deal with everything in this center front. So if this is folded so that up here where all these seam allowances are, that's where I'm folding it down. And then I'm just gonna tuck in that bottom to where my stitching line is. And they are going to ask us to whip stitch this by hand down, and I will be doing that, so that's fine. So I'm just taking this one side all the way, and I've gotten to the end here. So I'm just gonna clip that extra off. Okay, and while I'm holding it, put my little pin in there, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. Obviously, everything in between here, well, this is easy in the main part. It's just fold it and tuck it, okay? Over here, fold it all the way over, tuck it in. I stick my pin there and cut off the excess. 
I might cut off the excess when I'm done. Well, no, I can move my pin out of the way here. Okay. I'm not going to worry about that unraveling. It's going to be fine. So when, ouch, just stab myself. Okay. So when all of this is done, it should match up in the center there. All right. Pretend, oh, look at that. Look at that, look at that. I need to pick that open because that's going to drive me nuts. Um, this is just, you know, my back seam allowance got folded forward. So I'll open that up and restitch this little bit right here. Off camera, of course, because you don't need to see that. Over here at the very end, okay, I'm going to trim this so it's only sticking out maybe about half an inch or so. All right, fold it in like this and then fold it down and if you know what I'm going to clip off some of this corner because that's going to get in my way. Okay, corner is clipped. Fold this in, fold it down, wants to come undone there, like that. If I lay this flat, it'll probably be easier. And then tuck it up in, all right? And just like the other, there's too much bulk right here. Oy, okay, this tape has got to go. That has got to go, all right. Let's see if we can do this now that that tape is out of there. Trying to make it so that that little ragged edge does not stick out. And I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's it from the outside. That's it from the inside. You can see, I stick a little clip over here so it doesn't get a chance to move. While I put a pin in here. Okay. So now that I have it pinned just a little bit on either side, I can just continue on along the way. But so that you've seen how to do this side over here, I'm not too sure why there's the little fold there. I'll get that straightened out. So how, how to do this part, how to do this part. I'm gonna get a needle and thread and a thimble and uh, go downstairs, pop some kind of a YouTube thing on the TV and watch that while I take my time and whip stitch this into place. And I will be back after that. Alrighty, so I've got that all done. I haven't pressed it yet. I just turned my iron back on. I have my sewing room rigged up so that when I leave my room and I turn off my light switch, that shuts off all my machines and my, and my iron at the same time so I don't have to shut everything off individually. So now that I'm back, it needs to warm up. I wanted to show you a couple things. Uh, up here at the very top, okay, if I was concerned that this is not totally sealed up at the top right there, um, I would be putting a hook and eye in here, you know, and that would hold it so it's very closed from the outside. I don't really care about that. In general, my hair is long. I wear it long, so it covers it up. And if I put a hook and eye back here, sometimes that catches on my hair or something. So that doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, put a little hook and eye on the back side here to cinch that in, okay? The other thing is, you know, I'm doing the V-neck, which is different than the circle neck, and I need to press this. But once I have it hemmed here, hemmed here, I came back and just by hand did a couple little stitches right here so that I could make sure that this is gonna lay nice and flat. And I need to press that so it will, but it's looking, you know, looking cute on the outside. The last thing that I still need to do by hand and it's not totally a necessity, but I want to, is come in here at the bottom of this zipper 
And just so it's not going to flick around and catch me in the back of my leg and make me wonder what that is, I'm just going to open up these seam allowances and just tack the bottom of it to this seam allowance over here and that seam allowance over there just so it will still lay flat and it won't want to move. So I still have to do that and press it up at the top and then let's get we'll get started um, putting the little triangle pieces in this fabric on. Okay, so I've got these pattern pieces here. And before I actually start getting them put on, I'm gonna go and serge all the way around all four of these pieces um, so that they won't fray on me. Okay, so with all of my pieces serged, on the pattern, there's these little circles in the corners. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer those over just because it's gonna make it easier to get a precise seam. Um, well, maybe not, maybe not. See, here's the thing. We're gonna be making French seams here, which means these, this circle is at five eighths of an inch. Okay, so it is five eighths of an inch from each side. But with French seams, you're actually gonna be sewing it at about a fat eighth of an inch. So I might not actually need that dot because it's probably gonna be kind of self-explanatory. What I definitely am going to need though is the center point of each one of these pieces. So if I can get this to fold in half carefully here, I am going to go ahead and stick a pin in the very center point so I have that marked. Now there's four of these, and so what I do for this one, let's just assume it's gonna be the exact same for the other ones, okay? The only difference is two of these are gonna be placed center with a seam, which is gonna be easy, and two of them are not, two of them. We'll just have to match up the centers. So, this skirt is like a big square, okay? And on two sides of the square, there is a seam in the middle. Hmm, this side of the square here, okay? So, let me go ahead and trim this thread out here, and we'll place the first one here. So I'm putting my skirt, so it is uh, right side up. If you can't see, I know because it blends so well, this is where the seam is, right there. Okay, I am going to be, actually I need to flip this around because this is gonna be a French seam. I'm gonna be placing it on here wrong sides together first, which is gonna feel really wrong, but it works, okay? So I'm matching up the center of my square, or my triangle, with the center seam here. If I was gonna be doing one of the sides that does not have a seam, you just need to find the midpoint, okay? So I'm pinning it on both sides of that seam allowance so it'll stay nice and flat. And I do have these edges surged, which is actually going to be helpful because I'm kind of going to use the edge of my serging as a sewing guide, okay? So I'm going to stitch this at, um, if I put it my row of stitching just barely on this side of my serging line, that's going to be like a fat eighth of an inch seam allowance. And if I do it there, I shouldn't have to trim things, okay? So that's my goal. Okay, so I've got it stitched on. Okay, there's my little seam allowance. And I need to tell you that I'm not doing my French seams the same way the instructions are saying. They wanted you to stitch it at 3 8 of an inch and then trim it and then, you know, stitch it and things like that. This is just easier for me. So at this point, I am on the right side pressing the seam allowances to one side. It doesn't really matter which side I'm pressing them towards the point, okay? Just because that's gonna make it a lot easier for the next step, which is to fold this over so that the fold of where those two come together is at the very edge and I need to pin this in half, and then you can kind of see underneath where the texture changes, where the inside of that seam allowance is. 
I'm going to come back just beyond that point. So now add about a 3 8 inch seam allowance and do a row of stitching across here. Okay, so once I get this back down here again, I have already pressed my seam allowance up. I'm going to flip this down and I'm going to press it one more time so I can make sure that this is at the very edge here. Okay. I mean, this is going to be interesting. I can tell you that right now. My fingers are a little bit cold and they don't want to work as well. I don't know if you ever have that trouble. Okay. I should put the heater on up here, but I don't like to heat the hole upstairs sometimes. Okay, so now that that is pressed, now I can come and add about 3 8 of an inch, which is going to go well beyond that little seam allowance inside. I'm just going to go straight across here, all the way across. Um, actually, no, I'm. Let me take a quick peek at how they're going to want us to hem this because that might change. Hmm. No, it looks like they do want us to go all the way across. So there we go. All right, so let me go ahead and put this row of stitching in and then I'll be right back. All right, so now this is what that seam looks like and we're gonna wanna press this seam allowance up towards the main part of the skirt. I think I need to put a new needle in my machine. It snagged a little bit right there. Okay, so I'm just going to press this seam allowance up here all the way across. And what I've done here, I need to do to the other three points as well. Um, for the ones that you're lining up on a side that does not have a center seam, um, what you're going to need to do is just take your two corners, you know, fold them in half and find that center point and then that's what you can center up the triangle with. So let me get these other three done so that they look like this and I'll be right back. Okay so I am looking at their instructions for the hem and they basically want you just to make a narrow hem um, all over the bottom here and since these are just straight lines I'm they want you to do the thing where you stitch in half an inch and then turn to it. Since it's just a straight line, I think that I can just turn it in. Um, I'm trying to see how they want you to deal with these areas with these triangles. And on their previous instructions, they had you stitch all the way to the end. But I think that we're going to have to pull some of those stitches out, which doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if you look here, let's see here. Okay, here they had you stitch all the way to the end and crease, put, stitch. Um, yeah, they had you do your second row of stitching all the way to the end too. They don't say to stop at the dots on here. What I would say is when you're doing your second row of stitching to stop at these dots that we placed, but that's okay. You know, we can work around it. Um, and I think that what's going to be easier is to hem these triangles first and then come and do the red part, the big square itself a little bit later. So I am going to have to pick some of this out, I believe. So Oh, I never like that. I never, never like that. But what it needs to be done, it needs to be done. So again, it doesn't take much. You just grab my little razor blade here. I'm going to need about a half inch seam allowance. And that is about a half inch right there. Okay. So if I fold that up, I have about a half inch. Then I can just tuck it in. Okay. So I'm going to end up with a narrow hem that is approximately a quarter inch. Okay, so let me go ahead and get this first side pinned and then I'll show you uh, what we're going to do down here at the corner. 
Okay, so down here at the corner, if I fold this side up at about half inch or so, and I'm just going to crease it with my fingernail there, and then I fold this side up about half an inch or so and crease that, I'm, I don't know if you can, but I'm going to be able to see where those two fold lines are, right here and right here, okay? What I'm going to do is come back and trim off like if this is the intersection of those fold lines, about an eighth of an inch beyond it, I'm trimming off that corner. So then down here at the bottom, I'm going to fold up that little eighth of an inch that we left, okay? And then folding this side in about a quarter inch and up. It's going to give me a little mitered corner. I am... Um, what I'm going to do is actually stitch these corners by hand, like the first inch or so, um, this point. Just stitch it by hand to make sure that all of this is going to be good, and then I'll do the rest of it by machine. Um, but I'm just going to come back in here with a needle, needle, and thread and just set these corners in, okay? Okay, I just went ahead, after I had pinned it, I ironed it, and you know what? I think that I'm not going to worry about it being, you know, super duper perfect down here. So what I'm going to do is just stitch together this little miter area because, you know, that's a little more open than what I want. So I'm just going to uh, stitch this little bit together here, but then the rest of it I'm going to do by machine. Okay, so I just got that done and you may have another way that you like to do this. Do whatever works for you. This is what is working for me, okay? So I've got that secured there. This is pressed, so I'm just going to come back with my machine and edge stitch it all the way down, pivot, and then come back up to this point here. I'm not going to come all the way up. I'm going to stop right here before I get to the red part, okay? So let me go ahead and get that stitched, and I'm going to have to do the same thing to the other three corners. I've decided my best plan of attack is I'm just working my way around the skirt doing all of these little corner things first. So I just did this one on the red piece just to get that kind of settled and then I'll come back and do the hem. But if I can get all eight corners done first, that'll be a big help. So basically I cut the little edge off, okay, my little extra piece. If I fold it up at this point, it should be a miter, okay? And then I'm just going to stick a couple little pins down here to hold it kind of in place. Tuck these edges in. And put that there. Tuck this edge in here. And uh, then I can just stitch it, so, you know. It's a method, not necessarily the best, most exciting method, but it is a method. And then I just get my needle and thread and just stitch together those two little folded edges. Okay, I wanted to show you because I'm trying to go ahead and get this folded up so I just, when I'm at the sewing machine, I can just stitch the entire thing. And basically, what I'm having to do, this is that triangle I showed you before that I had to pick out back a certain amount so I could make this fold, okay? On this main fabric, um, because it's turned under where the French seam is, I'm having to clip it about an eighth of an inch, just enough so that I can tuck it underneath this way. It's kind of a weird deal. I mean, it's going to look okay when I'm done, but if I tuck it that way, then I can come back with this extra piece here and just kind of fold that in like this. Okay, so then I'm going to put a clip on this corner. And so when I'm stitching, say I'm coming along here, I'm going to be going over all of this stuff and then just aiming straight down here. And so that stitching, you know, I will need to press this obviously, okay? But the stitching that I do that's gonna be coming like right along here at this point, 
it's just going to kind of lock that in and then turn and come down this way. Keep going until I get to this bottom point here, pivot and go back up and the same thing up here, which I have not folded this one yet, but where I'm going to have to go across like that. So it's kind of an involved little pain. It's a, like a fabric origami getting all of this situated. Um, and actually I'm getting kind of tired of it. What time is it? It's dark. Well, it's 6.20, but it's dark outside. So I am going to call it a night here. Tomorrow morning or tomorrow at some point, I will finish getting this pin together, press it. I need to switch out the needle on my sewing machine because I think it's gone dull. I went over some um, plastic boning and I think that that bent the needle tip, but that's okay. Um, and once I have that, I will stitch it and then we should be done. Well, good morning and welcome to the next day. Things are looking better. It's amazing what a good night's sleep and a big breakfast after chores will do for you. And uh, I'm just finishing up getting this hem. Take your time on this thing because it's a pain, but it'll turn out pretty, you know. I just need to make sure that I do it justice. So like I said before, I do need to clip this and I see my camera battery is about to die. So I make a little clip right here, tuck this part under and pin that. And then when I come back and make this hem, I can just tuck it in. So let me change my camera battery, finish all of this and press it, and then I'll stitch it. Okay, so I am just over here a little bit at a time pressing it. Yes, I'm pressing it with my pens because this is just a cotton cloth. It's not gonna damage it at all. If you're using a really finicky fabric, you might not wanna iron over your pens. But for me, this is fine. And I know that this is a very, very colorful dress and it might not be to everyone's liking, but I was just thinking while I was ironing it when all of my colorfulness started because, um, you know, I was sensible at one point. And then one day I looked in my closet and realized that more than half of everything I had was black, you know? And yes, I understand the whole, oh, but it's slimming and everything. But to me, I was like a rude awakening that this is depressing. And I just kind of decided, you know what? I'm going to be colorful. I'm going to be cheerful and colorful because it helps my mood. I was uh, halfway through my chat about color and my microphone fell off. So here we go again. But anyway, yes, it's very colorful. And yes, I am closer to 60 than 50 now. But if it makes you happy, or if it makes me happy, I should say, I'm not going to speak for you. Um, part of sewing is you have the freedom to create whatever you want to. And I was looking at some old Stevie Nicks stuff because it was popping up that, oh my goodness, the younger generation is desiring more Stevie Nicks stuff. And I was looking at it, it's like, yeah, she was all about handkerchief skirts and you know wildness with a touch of lace so that's what kicked this project off so anyway i am going to go over to rosie now and i'm going to be using um, an edge stitch foot because uh, that's going to help me with so much edge stitching at wonky angles here to keep it nice and uniform so let me go over and get that foot changed out on her I just wanted to show you real quick. This is the foot I'm talking about, okay? And if you see, if I turn it sideways here, you can see that black thing. That's like a little spring-loaded guide, okay? So when I am sewing, and this is for 1 16th of an inch, if you can see on there. So when I'm sewing, if I put that guide just along the fold like this, it automatically is going to give me the same uniform 1 16th of an inch of stitching. So that's what I'm going to pop on. I'll show you how it works. Okay, I wanted to show you this. Um, one of the things that's kind of, I need to look for another foot. See, this one has the blade on the right side. 
and I need one that has a blade on the left side um, because where that blade is defines where the fold is. So if I had it on the left side, I could put all my fabric over here where there's more space, but I don't, so it's underneath the, the little harp of the machine. And Rosie has a huge space over here, so that's not a big deal. But I just wanted to show you, even though it's on this side and I have a little more bulk over here, it still works really well. So let's see here. Make sure I don't go over my pins. And what I wanted to show you when I get up to this point um, where everything is coming together. And I'm uh, trying to peek underneath the camera as I do this. Okay, so what I would recommend is when you get to your corners, um, have something that you can use to hold it together. I have my little pointy awl that I can put here. Just to hold it down uh, while the machine is getting closer to it. Okay, I wanna make sure that you don't get your fingers under there, but something has to hold that down. Okay, now I, have my needle down, I am lifting up my presser foot and turning my fabric and then setting it back down again, okay? And I do this a lot faster when the camera's not rolling, but you know, life. And then I can just start up again over here, okay? And I want to show you the little foot, how it really helps to just have a nice little uniform, tiny, tiny, tiny guide, but I don't have to worry about it going wonky on me, especially at a weird angle or something like that. So if you have one available for your machine and uh, you do a lot of edge stitching, they're handy. Um, this is a high shank machine and my Meister, which is my other main machine, um, is also a high shank machine. So they kind of trade off with their feet. So I'm gonna finish this up and give her a quick final press and then we're gonna see how she looks. Oh, the last thing is that this pattern did come with a big sash kind of belt, which I am not doing. I'm just gonna wear it with, you know, a regular leather belt. I have plenty of sashes in my wardrobe and I, I just don't feel that with all of this exuberance that I need a big bow, if you know what I mean. I think that the leather belt will ground it just a little bit. I was just putting her on my dress form and I realized there's something I forgot to do. So I'm gonna show you really quick on the underarms. I need to come back and trim out this extra bulk down here, um, like between the notches. So about from there to there, I'm just gonna trim it down to just on this side of my second row of stitching. So I need to do that really quick because otherwise it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable under my arms. And uh, yeah, and then she's done. <laughs> I do. Okay, so here it is. This is such a nice day out today. It's warm, you know, nothing is frozen. It is so nice. It's like spring. I know it's not going to last. I know there's going to be another cold spell, but I'm enjoying it. So I'm out here barefoot. But doesn't that just look fun? I mean, look at that. It's like a circle skirt, but it's a circle octagon or something like that. But anyway, the sleeves are a good length. 
As you can see, when I took my belt off, it is made with um, some ease into the waist, you know, plenty in the hips, you know, because of the circle skirt and everything. Um, I did drop the darts on the bust because, you know, gravity and everything, but that worked out well. The aim is good. And yes, this is not a practical dress. This is not, I'm working on sewing machines or cooking dress, but this could be a fun just going out and about around town and, you know, walking up and down the street looking at shops or something. You know, why not? Life is short and it's a beautiful warm day, so I'm going to celebrate. But I hope that it hasn't been too jarring. Um, I am switching to an every other week type of an upload just because life gets a little bit busy sometimes. So I will try on my off weeks when I'm not posting anything to, you know, put a little reminder post of what's coming up. Just so you know, I am still alive, still doing good and everything. Um, but you know, that's our plan right now. And I'm, the camera's going like this because the cat's rubbing on the tripod. So that's going to be it for this time. I'm looking forward to my next project. It's another one that I've been wanting to do for a while. It's a folk wear pattern. So I will see you then. Take care. Bye bye. Living my bucolic life, free of the city strife. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin. And move the horses in to the barn, then time to move them out again. Red barns, green pastures, beautiful my houses. The view I see each day when I arise. This light pleases me, as it is plain to see. I'm living my bucolic life.